work-based learning, that involves volunteering, job shadowing, apprenticeships, and internships. Getting experience while exploring career options will give you a head start on your future career. Work-based learning is also appropriate if you want to or need to change your current career. Volunteering. That is an excellent way to learn about career possibility while developing new skills or applying existing skills. Volunteer opportunities are available anywhere and everywhere. You can volunteer at schools here at Howard. You can volunteer at a business, uh, a hospital, government agency, community, and um, nonprofit organizations. But remember, most businesses will not turn down a free set of hands to volunteer. Uh, internships. This usually lasts for a couple weeks to uh, several months. Uh, one of the things I want to share with you is when I was here at Howard back in 1993, I had an internship at WHUR, the uh, Howard University radio station. I interned in their marketing and sales department. Not only did I get college credit for being an intern, but I also uh, got on-the-job training, and it was a paid internship. So I remember working an entire semester for $500. So uh, back then, that was a lot of money. And, um, but it gave me the opportunity to understand the importance of marketing and sales and business. So I wanna, I wanna thank Howard University and WHUR for giving me the op that opportunity uh, 19 years ago. Internships may, may officially or unofficially uh, incorporate mentoring by an experienced career professional that can support your career decisions and goals. Now we have job shadowing. That is when you identify people working in the careers that interest you and you talk with them. But what job shadowing does is for maybe a day or two days, you just follow around them on you follow them around on the job. You don't really get involved or any or any hands-on work. You just kind of just follow them around, just see what they do. Because if you've read about a job or uh, heard about a job, and it sounds like something that you may be interested in doing, uh, it, it may be helpful for you to meet someone that does that type of a career and just ask them, can you follow around for a day just to see if it's something that you would really uh, like to possibly go into. I did that because my freshman year at Howard, I was an accounting major and uh, I wanted to go into accounting. So I did a job shadowing of someone at, I think it was Ernst & Young in their accounting department. I couldn't wait to get back to Howard and change my major to marketing, or, excuse me, not marketing, business manager. I didn't realize until I did job shadowing that the position that I wanted to do, I would not be happy at it. So there are a lot of times when you major in something, but you never get an opportunity to work in that field until you graduate and then you end up not liking the type of career that you're going into because you never took the time to volunteer or intern or shadow that position. So I just recommend that. Old saying goes, if, if, you, uh, if you like the type of work that you do, then you don't, you don't consider it work. And the last thing for uh, work-based learning is apprenticeships. This is a combination of academic instruction, uh, structured vocational training, and paid work experience, usually lasting for one to two years. Uh, these programs are offered through employers in collaboration with the Department of Labor, Veterans Affairs, or local trade unions. So those are the six steps uh, to win a job interview. We started off with personal grooming, uh, business attire, proper etiquette, resume writing, letters of recommendation, and work-based learning. Well, before I wrap up, I'd like to go back and just mention a couple of, of things that uh, we may have not addressed in those six steps that I look at as just little tips uh, outside of the box to thing things to remember prior to your excuse me prior to your interview, things that you can remember or share with someone else. Research the company. Research the company. It's very important to know who you're interviewing with 
and why you want to work there. Rehearse before the interview. Talk with your parents, talk with your, uh, um, let's say your roommate, um, some of your other uh, peers, your students, a role play. You interview them, they interview you. It just gives you uh, some practice. Dress appropriately for the interview. Bring re several resumes. If I come and you interview me, I give you my resume. Uh, you're extremely impressed with the interview, but maybe the district manager or the uh, regional vice president happen to be up there the same day. And instead of scheduling you to come back for another interview, uh, you want to take the time and introduce me to him or her. Well, if you only have one resume with you and you say to that person, well, excuse me, do you mind making me a couple copies of my resume so I can go and speak to that person? It just makes you look unprepared. So please make sure you bring several resumes with you to your interview. Make sure your cell phone is turned off, uh, not on vibrate, not on silent, turned off. So I want to thank you for making sure you turned your phone off before we started our, our, our lecture today. Uh, bring a notepad and a pen to your interview for taking notes because there may be certain things that are discussed in your interview that you want to write down. They may ask you a question that you don't that you don't know the answer to that you need to follow back up with. So let me say, uh, what was your grade point average your first semester? No, your first semester here at Howard. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was a 3.2. Okay. <laughs> Well, no, that's good, but if you've been out of school for a while and you don't remember certain things, writing the question down, questions down are great because number one, it shows that if I ask you to do something for me, you'll do it. You do it in a timely manner uh, and it shows that you have research skills, but the most important thing is when you get back in touch with the person that you interviewed with, now this is an opportunity to put your name and your face in front of them again. Because if you sit, sat down and interviewed 10 or 15 people, but I asked you a question and you follow back up with me two or three days later, now uh, this gives me the opportunity to have you one-on-one -on -one again. Be polite and, and, and don't speak too casually with the interviewer. That, uh, one of the things I like to mention is, if you know who you're going to be interviewing with, i.e. their name, they may have a Facebook page. Go on their Facebook page and look them up. Because the last thing you want to do is walk in uh, and before you start your interview, you're talking about you grew up in Dallas and you're a Dallas Cowboys fan and their Facebook page, everything is Redskins. Because now you, you're, um, you get a little too casual with them, but also uh, you may offend them by saying something inappropriately. So just, just the way that a lot of times you hear about businesses going on your Facebook page or reading your, uh, look, looking to see if you have any YouTube uh, videos or uh, looking at anything you do on Twitter, uh, do the same thing for them if, you, if you're able to know who's going to interview you. Because that may be the key to help you um, uh, being successful in your interview. If you know that the person was from uh, New Orleans or they, they went to a certain college or university. Now this is giving you the inside scoop to be prepared to uh, have certain conversations with them. Be polite. Once again, uh, don't speak too much with your hands. We spoke about that earlier, but I'm restating these things. Don't take up too much of their time. Uh, after the interview's over, casual and leave. Because what's happening is they may have certain amount of interviews to do in a day and if you are taking up too much of their time speaking casually I'm going to assume that if I hire you what are you going to do all day long speak casually you're not going to work you're going to go over to this person's cubicle you're going to go over to this person's desk all you're going to be is in the break room talking all day long and not doing your work so that's why you, you come in you break the ice real quick you do your interview you're cordial and casual and you leave uh, don't bring up salary or benefits in the first interview. Be enthusiastic and smile. Be happy that you're there. No one wants to hire a grumpy person with an attitude because that's bringing a toxic environment to your um, 
to your company or your agency. Like the same type of person that you hire that the, you know, every day they come to work is they're complaining about traffic or they're complaining about they couldn't find a babysitter or they're complaining about the cost of gas or, you know, they, they, they don't want to go on the company field trip or company, uh, uh, play on the company softball team. I mean, no one wants to be around someone negative all day long. And if you come into an interview complaining about, you know, uh, I had to drive here from Alexandria, Virginia, and I got caught in traffic in the way, and uh, you know, it, it rained, and I'm tired of this, I'm tired of that. That's just letting me know that, you know, you're a negative person, and I, I don't want you around. I don't want you around me, because negativity spreads. And it's like a cancer, and if you bring that to your organization, then the other employees will be that way. So you wanna keep the negativity out of the job interview. You want to speak slowly and clearly. Uh, if someone asks you a question that you don't know the answer for, that's why it's good to ask for clarification. Don't just talk off the top of your head answering something. You know, ask for clarification if you don't understand what they were asking you. Uh, do not leave the interview if you're interested in the job. If your interview has been successful and you've heard more about the company that you like and you want to work there, tell them before you leave, uh, you know, I, I would really like to work here. Thank you for, for interviewing me. And, um, you know, I, I would really, really like to work here. That, that just lets them know that, okay, this person is, is, is serious about working here. They're just not at some type of career fair uh, going around passing their resume out to 40 different companies. Because if I, if I, if I was an employer, and, I, and I'm being Truthful and honest, because I am an employee. If I had a business at a career fair, uh, and I would, I would just sit back and watch people. I would see how many booths are they going to. Are they just walking around, just passing their resume out to everybody they see? Or do they have a list that they said, okay, I want to come in and speak to Ernst & Young. I want to come in and speak to Lockheed. I want to come in and speak to Boeing, and I want to come in and speak to Raytheon. And after those four people, I, I, four companies I speak to, I'm leaving because I know exactly who I want to work for and what I want to do. So if 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 you came to my booth, and I'm just sharing with this with you, if you came to my booth, I'm going to ask you how many other companies have you spoke to today, or what are you interested in doing? And if and if you tell me, I've always wanted to work for Raytheon or I've always wanted to work for uh, Pepsi-Cola, and this is why I want to work there, and this is what I want to do there, then as the potential employer, I'm going to know that this person is serious about, serious about working for me, and that's what I want, because I could be a selfish employer. I don't want you doing anything for anyone else. I want you to make sure you spend your time with me. Um, something that a lot of people don't do these days, but it's... It, it will help, especially for the younger folks. I'll share this with you. One of my mentors taught me this um, maybe 15 years ago, and it works. You want to follow up one week later with a handwritten card to the person that interviewed you. The reason why you want to do that is because most people, when they receive mail, what do they get in the mail? Bills, right? It's not common to receive cards in the mail. Nowadays, everyone sends out is it e cards or e vites or um, cards on the internet. So you look at it, you delete it. But if someone took the time to go and purchase a card, handwrite a note inside of the card, go to the post office, buy a stamp, and mail it. That lets me know that, that, that this potential employee goes above and beyond, and they pay attention to the attention, to excuse me, they, they pay attention to detail. Now, if you receive a nice handwritten card, what are you gonna do, take it and throw it in the trash? You're gonna keep it on your desk, or you might pin it on the wall, and when the other employers come in and look at it, uh, they're gonna say, oh, what is that? This is um, a card that, that uh, Joe Smith gave me. I interviewed him last week, and uh, he, get, he sent me a card. 
thanking me for the interview, thanking me for the time to talk about the position that he was applying for. I guarantee you, if, if you interview 100 people out of the 100 people, you might get two people that send you a handwritten card. Maybe less than that, I'm just saying two. Maybe more than likely zero. So I'm telling you this, do a handwritten card. That's the first week. The second week is uh, when you send an email. Now you send an email, they'll know who you are because they'll remember your name and information from the handwritten card that you sent them. It's appropriate, it's quick. Uh, you want to thank them for their time. So restate your interest in the position that you're applying for. Um, you know, state your name again. Now the third week, so the first week after the interview, you sent a handwritten card. Second week was an email. The third week, that's when you make a phone call. Follow up with a phone call. Uh, state to the person who interviewed you, your name, um, the position that you applied for. More than likely, they're going to bring up the fact that you that you sent them a card. They're going to say, oh, Bob, or John, or, or Jane, or uh, Miss Allen, uh, thank you for the card that you mailed me. That was very nice of you. And then you'll talk briefly. You'll ask them maybe, you know, the, the results of the interview. It just gives you an opportunity to build a relationship with them. My suggestion is after the, the third attempt, uh, just sit back and, and uh, see what happens. Because an employer wants you to be, you want to be, uh, you do not want to be annoying, but you want to be persistent. They want you to know that you really want that position, but you don't want to like worry somebody to death because uh, you, you know you're applying for a job. So you interview with them, you send them a handwritten card, you send them an email, you call them if you don't get them, you leave a voicemail message, and then you just leave it alone and you sit back. And if they don't contact you based on those three attempts that you've made, that may not be the place you want to work. Now, some other tips and advice we have are, remember when you walk in the door, keep your head up, maintain eye contact, give a firm handshake, smile, and be confident. Employers look at certain qualities of job seekers when you walk in the door. So ladies, uh, it was brought to my attention last week. Uh, I know someone that did not get hired from a company because she was told at a later date that she had too much of a, um, switch when she walked uh, and, and or strut. The reason why she was not hired because the person in human resources said that the way she walked might be a little too distracting from some of the male employees. So be careful how you walk. Gentlemen as well, be careful how you walk in the interview. To get a job, you must Im impress the employer, not your friends. Uh, check your pride at the door. Humble yourself. If, if you don't usually walk that way, or you don't usually talk that way, or you don't usually sit that way, your number one goal in the interview is to get hired. So you have to do what you got to do to get what you want. And humble yourself, leave your pride, and get, get hired. Getting your resume read and considered is the first step toward getting a job. Remember, we talked about this before. Poor, poor grammar, um, bad spelling, improper words and slang have no use and no place on your interview. Do not put anything inappropriate on Twitter or, or uh, Facebook or any other site. Occasionally, when you go on your Facebook page or other pages, uh, see if you've been tagged in any other photos that uh, you might have taken. So that's why just be careful of what you do because you may not put a photo on Facebook, someone else might, and it shows something that you may have done a little inappropriate, so be careful about that. Have an answer machine or a voicemail. If they can't leave you a message, more than likely uh, they won't call you back. And if you do have a voicemail, uh, have a appropriate message or have an, don't have a uh, crazy song that's playing before uh, they leave the message. Um, another trick you want to remember is keep an umbrella in your briefcase or messenger bag uh, 
uh, when you go to your interview, plan ahead. So let's say you are interviewing for a job here at Howard University and you have to park on Georgia Avenue, which is maybe two blocks away, and you have to walk across campus. Well, by the time you uh, park your car and you're getting ready to walk, you realize that it's raining and it's coming down really bad. Well, you're walking across campus in your nice dress or your nice suit, you're, you're wet. Then you go into the interview and you're soaking wet. It's not a good look because what if the person that's interviewing you after, interviewing with, that, uh, with Howard after you, uh, they go into the interview perfectly dry. I would, I, would, I would ask them, you know, is it still raining outside? And uh, they said, well, yeah, it is raining outside, but I, I always plan ahead. I always keep an umbrella in my briefcase. I always keep an umbrella in my car in case it rains. That lets that employer know that this young man or young woman is organized. They're prepared. Literally, they're ready for a rainy day. And those are the type of people that you want to hire are people that are prepared for anything. Ladies and gentlemen, you also want to make sure that you own shoe polish. I know some, some people, when they, when they uh, look at someone, they look from the head to the, their feet and don't have shoes that are scuffed up or they're not shined. You want to make sure they're shined. Uh, you want to own an iron uh, in case your, your uh, interview is out of town or you need to iron a couple of things before you go in there. Just make sure you're neat and pressed. Uh, you want to own a raincoat or an overcoat in case it's raining again or uh, cold. Uh, and also, you want to own a sewing kit. I just added that on there about two weeks ago. It wasn't on there. But I went to a wedding, and a friend of mine, he, uh, he wore this, this suit to the wedding. I was, I was teasing because he, he bought a three-piece suit, and he paid like $65 for it, brand new. And I said, well, and before the wedding even started, I think three of his buttons fell off. So I was laughing, I said, well, that's what you get for buying a, a three-piece suit for $60. I'm surprised that, you know, uh, one of your pants legs didn't fall off. But um, the, the moral of the story is, I happen to have a, um, a sewing kit in my car because one of the businesses that I own, I own a uh, dry cleaners. And uh, someone was doing some alterations and they needed some, a certain color thread. And I said, well, let, let, me just, let me just do this. Give me the thread and uh, I will try to research online to see if we can match that color. So I had thread and needle in my car, but it just happened to be that the same color of thread that I had was the thread that he needed for his suit, for his button. So we kind of laughed and joked about it. And before the wedding started out, I'm sitting over there in the back room sewing on buttons on, on someone's vest. And it just made me remember. What if you're going to an interview and you, and you have a dress shirt and one of your buttons comes off? Or if you're wearing a button down a collar and one of the buttons comes off of your collar? That's why you need to make sure you plan ahead with having certain things in your possession prior to the interview. That goes back to arriving early to the interview. If you get to your interview and you notice that one of your buttons are loose or uh, one of your buttons have come off on your, on your shirt or your blouse, you can go in uh, to the restroom and fix fix that, repair that. You want to always be punctual. It's better to be early uh, than on time because remember we said there's no such thing as being on time if you're it's either early or you're late. Uh, you want to shake hands firmly. I'm mentioning this again. Um, be polite at all times. Saying excuse me, please, and thank you should be second nature and you should always be courteous even when others are being irritating or rude to you. If you're interviewing with someone and they're on the computer typing an email, uh, the last thing you want to do is say, hey, you hear me talking to you? Uh, pay attention to me. You, you don't want to be rude to someone else even though they're being rude to you. Uh, one of the last couple things we'll mention before we wrap up is um, <clears throat> do not interrupt someone when they're speaking. In conversation, it's rude to speak over others. And if you uh, do so inadvertently, uh, you should simply excuse yourself and listen carefully uh, until it's your turn to speak. 
sometimes some people uh, take a pause, like maybe a three or four second pause to gather their thoughts. But you might assume that they're stop, they stop speaking. But if they start speaking again, just realize that uh, they just paused and just wait for your turn. Now, um, always exercise, stay fit, uh, dress appropriately, have a confident walk. Now, looking for a job is a job. It's a 40 hour per week commitment. So it's one of those things that you have to schedule a, a time every day to look for employment. Uh, you can find um, careers online. You can go to websites of uh, Department of Labor, local libraries, um, college career centers, and vocational technical schools. Uh, you want to ask your classmates, your doctors, your clergy, your friends, uh, insurance agent, uh, your teachers, a store owner, elected official, these are all people you can ask about leads for employment. Uh, keep your spirits up. It can be difficult to not take rejection uh, personally, but I guarantee you at one time uh, uh, you have heard that they're not hiring. So there's a right and wrong way to respond to a company that says that uh, they are pre not presently hiring. Remember, Everyone at one time has heard, no, we're not hiring. But always respond by saying, well, if you do need someone in the future, please give me a call. I'll leave you a copy with, of my resume. Uh, 